കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം നാമസ്തെ വെൽക്കം ടു ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് എപ്പിസോഡ് ഓഫ് ദൃഗ് ദൃശ്യ വിവേക നൗ വി ഗോയിൻ ടു കവർ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് നൈൻ വേർ the book finally switches from descriptive to prescriptive and we learn the most basic technique of vivartavada meditation neti neti sambandhino satur nasti nivritti sahajasyatu karmakshayat prabodhachcha nivartate kramadube the mutual identification of the ego and the reflection of consciousness which is natural does not cease as long as they are taken to be real the other two identifications disappear after wearing out the result of karma and the attainment of the highest reality respectively and just to make this absolutely clear here's a little chart building on the one we used last time showing the different types of ego identification what kind they are and how they end so the reflection of consciousness which is natural so the ego identification with the reflection of consciousness which is natural ends when seen to be unreal the ego identification with the body due to past karma ends when karma is exhausted and the ego identification with the witness which is due to ignorance ends when jnana is realized so these are very important because they give us a practical means of disidentification which has to happen before real meditation can take place if we're in ignorance if we're in illusion if we're thinking that the body is mine huh if we're thinking that the world seen through the senses is real if we're thinking that the reflection of consciousness in the mind is real then how can we meditate or well, what are we going to meditate on see the whole title of the book gives away the secret drig drishya vivekaha discrimination between the seer and the seen and this technique is called neti 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 is a contraction or sandhi of two words na and iti na means not iti means this so by saying not this not this to the various illusions we can separate ourselves from them after all this identification of the ego especially with the reflection of consciousness lasts only as long as we take it as real what does that mean take it that means we see it or we accept it as being real so the minute we put up a critical barrier and say now wait a minute <laughs> this consciousness is duality because consciousness has a seer and a seen so because of this it cannot be the ultimate reality not this not this and when we see the body or the senses or anything reflected in the senses because the reflection of consciousness also is reflected onto the senses if we have intelligence if we have discrimination viveka we can say not this we can reject it we can say this is not real this is not myself then what is myself is arrived at by a process of elimination not this not this not this not this other thing huh 
Let's go through it in practice. How does it work? In practice, we sit down to meditate. And of course, the first thing we notice is that there's this body and the body has different senses. The senses have their different objects. And all of this is not the self. Why? Because it's seen. The self is not the seen. The self is the seer. So the body, the senses, the mind, huh? all these jabbering voices in our head, they're not the self either. So all this gets rejected and actually pushed away at a distance. It's not the self. But what's the use of paying any attention to it? Yes, of course, we have habits built up over a long, long time of accepting these things as real. So this is going to take some effort, some persistence, and we're going to have to build it into a habit of rejecting these things as not the self, neti neti. And it gets more and more subtle. As we begin to develop concentration and separate ourselves from the senses, uh, this is called uh, dharana. See, we have to remove ourselves from the senses so that we have all of our attention collected in one place. And this is dharana, the preliminary concentration before meditation can happen. So what happens during this stage is that often we will perceive mental phenomena or energetic phenomena, such as lights, movements of energy, and other phenomena. But these are also not it. Huh? Why? Because we can perceive them. Anything that can be perceived is not the self. Anything that is seen is not the seer. See, this is the fundamental meaning of this whole text, this whole book. And the book goes into great detail, and we'll see more and more as we progress, on how to separate ourselves from these identifications, these false identifications. They are habits. They have been built up over a long, long time. They take persistent effort to undo. But when one finally undoes them, something happens. <laughs> and that will be discussed toward the end of the book. So this is given, the same process is given in the Yoga Sutras, in Vedanta, in the Buddha's teaching, not so-called Buddhism as it stands today, but in the original sutras. And if you go back to the original sutras, you'll find the same teaching there. Neti neti. This is not it. This is not it. Everything that you can see, everything that you can perceive is not the self. So then what is the self? The self is the seer. Ramana Maharshi one time said, someone asked him, can you show me God? And he said, no, I can't show you God because God is the seer. Can the eye see itself without a mirror? <laughs> no, it's not possible. And there's no mirror within. The only mirror is the reflection of consciousness in the mind. And yes, we, we can turn that reflection towards the seer and we can see lights and things like that. And that's a step on the way. But ultimately, even that has to be given up. Even that has to be seen as the scene, the object, not the subject. And we are after the subject. So by this process of progressive discrimination between the seer and the seen, 
we arrive at the real seer, the real self. And let's go back to that chart again. I'm going to read the commentary. How the several identifications of the ahankara, the ego, come to an end. The ego and the reflection of consciousness identify themselves with each other the moment they come into existence. They can never separate themselves from each other as long as they are taken to be real. It's like the reflection of the sun and the water in a pot. The reflection can never separate itself from the water. The reflection disappears only when the water pot ceases to be. The identifications of the ego with the body and the witness end in different ways. The identification of the ego with the body is due to past karma, whose effect is seen in this body as long as the prarabdha karma continues to produce its effects. But when the body comes to an end, owing to the complete wearing out of the effects of karma, its identification with the ego ceases automatically. This phenomenon is also observed at the time of fainting and deep sleep, when the effects of karma are temporarily suspended. The identification of the ego with the witness, consciousness itself, is due to error, bhranti, which is destroyed only by the attainment of direct experiential knowledge of Brahman, jnana. Knowledge destroys ignorance and its effects. Ahankara, or the ego, is the effect of ignorance. Therefore, it is also destroyed by realized knowledge. That's not theoretical knowledge. That's not verbal knowledge. That's realized knowledge. That means it occurs naturally in consciousness, in our awareness. Of course, to hear the correct knowledge in the form of words is a beginning. But that's not the actual realization. <laughs> the actual realization can only occur when the mind is completely empty. Ramana Maharshi says this in his books and talks in so many ways. Huh? He approaches it from every different angle. And he is the closest fully realized sage to us in time and space. Here in Tiruvannamalai, his energy is very strong. And when you read his books in the shadow of Arunachala, you can feel something. You can feel that this is real. And then when you sit down and meditate and you actually do these things, then you can know it for yourself. But you have to do the work. There is no substitute for sitting down and going through this process of neti neti. Huh? See, this is where the neo Advaitins miss. The neo Advaitins theorize that simply by knowing about the truth of Brahman in the form of words, aham brahmasmi, is enough. But no, that's only the beginning of the process. This is technically known as the vivarta vada. Vivarta means appearances. So when we accept that everything that is perceived is but an appearance and that only the perceiver is real, that is the beginning of the vivarta vada. So that's good. You start at the beginning, but then you have to do the process. And what is the process? Sit down, shut up, <laughs> go within, and discriminate the seer from the seen. This is the factual path that leads to authentic enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.